We just want to give you a quick run through about what is normal engine breathing and when does breathing become blow-by. Everyone's so obsessed um, with diesels and blow-by and whatnot. I don't think a lot of them fully appreciate the breathing side of it as well. So I'll run you through and give you a couple of quick points as to how you can help understand the way it works. We've obviously got a cylinder head here and a couple of engines to use as an example. Now in, in your rocker cover, sapper cover, whatever the case may be, you'll have an exit point in which the engine breathes. Now all these hoses from there on are referred to obviously as breathing hoses because it is very important for you to have an accurately or a properly functioned breathing system. Blow-by is the next step from them, so we'll just concentrate on what breathing is. And the only way to develop like a sense or a knowledge, every single engine has to breathe. So unless you disconnect a breathing hose on a, on a, a new engine or an engine that is known, that you know the quality of, etc., and you get a feel for how much air will be coming out under normal breathing operations, you won't know. People think they pull it off and they feel air coming out, wow, it's got blow-by. You can block this hole, it should build up pressure, release your finger, build up pressure again, and that has to happen because an engine has no choice but to breathe. If it doesn't breathe, you'll end up with a lot of a host of other issues, oil leaks, etc., um, that are a result of that. But we'll just stick to how it works for a second. So inside, this is just a 1KD rocket cover, but everything's the same or very similar. They have different ways of doing it, but the end result is the same. With this, it just simply the baffle unscrews. So a rocket cover has a baffle in it, as you can see there. So we have, it's broken up into compartments. They have um, sections where the air actually, we'll put this down for a second, where the air enters and, and spots where the oil drains off. The reason we have this baffle, this breathing system, is to make the oil that is carried with the moving air drop away. Where that air comes from, now it's important to remember, as I say, it only has an exit point. It's not like a petrol with a PCV valve where you have air coming in through one section of the rocket cover and air leaving through the other. With a diesel, you only have an exit point. The reason you need that exit point, you can have, obviously we've got inlet exhaust valves, they must seat, so we can have 100% seal there. Your injector on a direct injection engine, not an indirect like 5Ls, 3Ls, that sort of thing. On direct injection, you have a seat which has access to the crankcase. I guess it comes down to how, how you define it as well. But through breathing, with the piston, we have to have what's called a ring end gap. So the ring obviously is not a complete circle. It has to go over, so you have a gap in the end of that ring. That needs to have a specif specified gap so that you do not, um, so when it heats, they don't butt together and jam. So you have a hole in every compression stroke as it comes up, even though we have a complete seal here, air from compression still has to make its way past those rings through the end gap. The piston has to obviously have clearance in the bore, so it makes its way past the piston. That will then exit back up through your breathing holes and come out into the rocker cover. So that's how you produce what is defined as engine breathing. Every piston stroke, every compression stroke that, that piston makes through the ring end gap has to have a hole, as I say, so air, certain percentage escapes past the system into the crankcase, comes up and out through the breather. With the breather broken up into compartments, as I say, the reason they wanna do that is so as it turns a corner and moves and the, air, the oil in the air hits the walls, the oil drops away from the air, the air exits with as much oil as it can possibly be removed, which then drains off back into the rocket cover. When you get blow-by, now blow-by is what I define as air above the normal rate in which it would leak past the end gap. So you fail on a piston, you get massive clearance. That's all of a sudden in, in, induces a large amount of air, which is blow-by as the engine wears, the ring end gaps open up. So you get, um, it's three to one, the ratio of wear in what it opens up your ring gap. So the diameter of the ring, as it increases through wear, so it gets bigger, so the gap opens up more, so you get more air bleeding past, which then comes to more air coming out the tablet cover. As the air comes out, so you've got the same amount of air, a larger amount of air trying to get through the same hole. So the air speed increases. When it increases, it carries more oil. That's how when you get a failed piston, all of a sudden you get a massive amount of air rushing out through the breather or a massive amount of blow by, then you will carry more oil with it. That's why your fuel catch cans, you'll get oil dripping out of your intercooler, all that sort of thing, because 
all of a sudden you've introduced high speed air through there that it can't cope with, it can't function properly through these baffled chambers and it can't take the oil away. So you have to remember there is normal engine breathing when it's in good condition and then blow by refers to extra air other than that. So if you said for easy maths that the engine, just, just to make it easy, so your ring end gaps added up to 1% of the compression volume escaped past the piston, it won't be that. But if you did, that would give you your base reading of engine breathing. On top of that, anything else through piston, failure wear, injector seat, whatever, is added to that. That then becomes what is defined as blow-by, which is a compression exhausting through the crankcase. If something goes through a valve, doesn't seat the exhaust valve or something, that is not blow-by. So it is important to understand the difference between the way an engine breathes under normal operation, when you introduce a fault or wear, the extra air that carries and will use the oil will then be defined as blow-by. If there's any way I can help, please give me a call.